Welcome back. Last video looked at parallel current carrying conductors and did a couple of calculations as well. We're going to do this video and go for the next top point, which says define torque as the turning moment of a force using T equals F times T. And this T is not a normal T like in Tesla, but it's a different type of T that stands for torque. And before I start, I'll go give you a quick question. Have you ever wondered when you open a door, why you don't open a door from why a door handle maybe isn't here, but it's always quite far away from the actual rotation? The reason why, obviously, I mean, one reason why is it would be quite weird if it's close by, because that means you have to stand really far away from it to open the door, because otherwise you'd be squeezed in. But also because it has something to do with torque, which is what we're discussing now, torque. So what torque is, is torque is the movement around a pivot. So pivot is something where it rotates around, and the pivot in the door is right here. So the door itself rotates around that pivot. Now the importance when it comes to torque is the distance from the pivot, so how far actually is away from it. Now here in this case, if it's the door handle is here, we apply a force here, which means the distance that we apply a force from the pivot is so far, whereas if it's closer, the distance will be less. And I'll go over why that's important, because the further it's away, the less energy we have to apply to open the door. Because the next part of that formula was F, which stands for force, and more importantly, the perpendicular force. So this here is the equation. T stands for torque. FP stands for force, or especially perpendicular force. And D stands for distance. So the distance between the pivot, the place where it's rotating around, and the actual door handle itself. Now if, for example, we increase our force, oh, and the actual units are meters per second. So what that means, if we have a high torque, that means that door is moving a lot faster, it's going to open a lot faster. Whereas if we have a low torque, that means it's going to be rotating slower. So if the door is opening very slowly, that has a low torque, whereas it's open really fast, it has a high torque. Now this here, the force perpendicular, also makes sense. When you open a door, do you usually stand to the side when you open it? Or do you actually stand right in front of it and just perpendicular to the 90 degrees angle between you and the door? Well, usually I mean you just have the door handle and you grab it straight and you open it from there. So you can have a perpendicular angle. And it makes sense because using this formula, and I'll go through that in a second as well, if we have a perpendicular angle, that means we have the maximum strength force applied. Whereas if we, for example, if you, you can imagine if you have your your actual back resting against the door and you would try to actually open that handle, you would have to apply a lot more force to open it than you would have to if you're standing straight in front of it. So if your angle is perpendicular, you have to apply less force to open the door than if you were standing parallel to it and you're opening it with your back towards the actual door. I tried that earlier as well, so if you have your back towards the door and you're trying to open the actual handle, it's going to feel a lot harder to open the door, whereas if you were straight in front of it, it's going to feel a lot easier. I'll go over it in a second why it is. So these were the important parts. So what that means, if we have high force and high distance from the pivot, then we have our max torque, whereas if we have low force and the pivot is a small distance from where we're applying the force, so at D, stands for where we're applying the force. So at the moment, for example, the door handle, if the door handle is here, and that's where we're applying our force. And yeah, the other one is where how much force we're actually applying. So I'll give you two examples. So this is maybe calculation you get. You know, here is our pivot. And this is given. It's got seven meters here and three meters here and 50 newtons here. And then we need to do calculations. So if, what is our torque? Well, first, we need to get our force. And because it's actually at 90 degrees, so we can see our force is being applied at 90 degrees. So you can imagine as you open the door straight and you have your door at 90 degrees. So that all we have to do for that is we put our newtons in here. So equals 50 newtons. And the distance is the distance between the pivot and where the force is applied, which means the distance between here and you apply the force here, so it's here to there. 
if you were to say 10 meters, it's not the whole distance. It's distance between pivot and where you're actually applying the force. So it's times 7 meters. So to get a torque, you just do 50 times 7. And I can do that in my head. I am that impressive. That would be 3... I better not get it wrong. 350. It should be 350 newtons meters per second. Meters per second. So what that means is we actually have the door itself opening at a speed of 50 newtons per second. Now this is the other scenario. Now here you're opening that same door but you're opening it from an angle. You're not opening it straight, looking straight into the door. You're opening it from the side and that means the actual angle is not 90 degrees. It's actually 45. So this were 90. If this whole thing would be 90, but that's actually 45. So we've got the same values except for we have a different type of angle. And what we have to do to get that torque is we have to put our torque there and then we put, okay, we can put that same distance. The distance stays the same, that's 7 meters. Now we have to do something else. We can put our force down times 50 and that's still the same. But even though we're putting, even though strength-wise, we're putting the same amount of strength into it, 50 newtons, it's going to open slower. And the reason why is because we don't have that perpendicular angle. So that's what I said earlier. You can have that same, you know, you put the same amount of effort in, but you get less result out of it if your angle is not perpendicular. In this case, it's not perpendicular. And what we can do is we can just say, okay, we can take the sine of that angle, the so sine 45, and if you put sine 45 into your calculator, you get 0 0.7. So sine 90 would be 1, sine 45 is 0 0.7. And the reason why is because we're looking at a ratio. Even though we've put in 50 newtons, because it's not perpendicular, we're not going to get all that strength actually going into our torque. We're only going to have 0 0.7, so 70% of our newtons being used to speed up that torque. The rest is wasted. That's what that means. That's why I have that sine 45, because it's not 1 anymore. It's not sine 90, it's sine 45. We've lost some strength. We've lost some of our newtons. So if you put all that in your calculator, what you would get, you would get less than 350 because you've actually, even though you kept everything is the same except for the angle, the angle itself has made it slow down. So you get times 0 0.7, you get 245. So T is 245 newtons per second. And what that means is you actually, the amount of movement has gone down. So if you have a different angle, if you don't have an angle of 90 degrees, and you want to keep that same speed, what that means you would have to increase the amount of newtons you have. You have to increase the force you're applying. So ideally, we have an a angle of 90 degrees and a distance being far away from the pivot. That gives us a stronger turning force. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.